The healthcare industry has been no stranger to technological advancements. In fact, it has been one of the fastest growing markets with regards to technology. Now with new potential disruptive technologies, one might wonder, how will this shape the future of the industry? HealthApp may very well be one of those potential disruptive technologies. At no cost, you can use HealthApp's free features to ask anonymously health questions to get answers from doctors in HealthApp's medical expert network. Explore their extensive library of health information curated by trusted doctors. Theranos is a biotech company Elizabeth Holmes founded in 2003 with plans to revolutionize the $75 billion blood testing market. Theranos developed a blood testing device named Edison, which claimed to use the few drops of blood obtained from a finger stick to run multiple lab tests while utilizing the microfluidics technology. In 2014, the company was valued at $9 billion. Now, it's worth zero. We decided to take a look and find out what people within the healthcare industry thought about these technologies. No, I have not. I think it completely depends on the situation of the patient. I think it's good that we're being so progressive and like making it so much easier for possible patients to have access to doctors. Um, I think especially with that you send a message and then within 24 hours you get a reply, it's sometimes so much easier because it's for a lot of people, including myself, sometimes so hard to, to actually make an appointment and actually schedule something in with your GP, for example. So I think that's just easy, like on whatever day you don't feel well, oh wait, let me just quickly text my symptoms and I'll, I'll get a reply in 24 hours. I think that's great, but then I do still think you kind of miss at times like the interaction you need with the GP, because I think it's also going to be difficult in terms of like, um, a GP knows what information he or she needs to, in order to diagnose and see what's going on. So for example, I could send information as a patient to a doctor that's completely irrelevant. So then I, I have to wait for his reply, reply to that again and keep on going and going. And if there's 24 hours in between every single message, I don't think that's very convenient or, or like good. The primary business of HealthTap is to increase access to care in the existing healthcare foundation. As a business model, they are reducing the cost of interaction via virtual sessions. Citrus Paribus, the technological platform, works as advertised. HealthTap poses a free experience in which you can post a question and this will be answered by one of the participating doctors. You can opt for the freemium experience where you pay five US dollars for a response from more than one doctor get an answer faster, and buy an extra 100 characters to describe your symptoms. The premium version, for which you pay a monthly subscription fee, will allow you to immediately video call a generalist or specialist through your phone, tab, or computer. It is also possible to get prescriptions, referrals, and lab orders. You also get all the free additional services that come with the freemium package. This model might work in certain regions where there is no access to affordable public health care or in remote geographical locations. In regions where this is not the case, doctors will individually decide if they will start adopting video calling rather than the normal phone. This is perhaps not on-demand interaction with a doctor. However, if HealthTap's users increase significantly, it will not be possible for the participating doctors to take every voice call instantly, limiting the on-demand effect and in that regard, they will have to call you back just as your family general practitioner does. I, uh, yeah, 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 I guess so. I think it's also easier, for example, if you have something that's uncomfortable to share. So for example, think of like, I don't know, like urinary tract infections or, or STDs. I think it's way easier to just send a quick message and actually, you know, go to a GP and be like, hey, I think I suffer from an STD or something. I think technology is definitely going to play a bigger part than it already does right now. I think it, it helps us out so much in terms of like imaging devices. We can now see so much of what's going on inside of the body that we couldn't do before. 
um, and lots of blood tests and all these things that thankfully because of technology have become possible. It's like for example now you can study like clinical technology. I recently had like a lecture with them and they really get taught how to come up with more progressive and more like innovative products and I think it's just gonna make the health sector even better and better and better. So. Theranos is marking the price up to 100% of its cost. The typical markup of blood tests is about 66%. Yes, two thirds. So for a test that costs $300 for the patient, there's a pre-tax and interest operating margin of $200 to be made. Another interesting aspect is that Theranos had a great distribution model, which was unheard of from a diagnostics company. It had a partnership with Walgreens, the second largest chain of pharmaceutical companies in the US. Their patients were able to give their blood samples and get results within four hours. Walgreens acted also as collection centers for Theranos to avoid real estate costs and simply received a certain percentage of the revenue. Additionally, Theranos had been conducting tests for GSK and Pfizer and several hospitals, which sent out complex test blood samples from their own labs. However, without the doctors in the chain, the company was under the spotlight of the governmental agencies and the general public alike. It was the Wall Street Journal that had the first allegations that the company was, in fact, a sham. That its vaunted core technology was actually faulty and that Theranos administered almost all of its blood tests using competitors' equipment. And now, after the scrutiny from the government, the regulators have revoked the firm's license to operate a lab in California due to the unsafe practices, and Holmes is banned from the blood testing business for at least two years. I'm definitely for any like technological advancement, uh, especially in terms of the medical field. For example, just like these things like defibrillators, for example, they've become so useful that, you know, for diseases that, you know, the mortality was so high before. So I'm definitely all for these changes. Yeah. We managed to come in contact with one of the doctors at Erasmus MC, but for privacy issues, she didn't want to be filmed and want to remain anonymous. I think it might. Maybe it's uh, the threshold hold. Maybe uh, lower for patients to ask uh, questions. Uh, on the other side, uh, you have to be skeptic, I think, because um, uh, most of the time you have to see the patient, because you have to see how the patient looks like, how the clinical symptoms are. Uh, but just for easy, pretty easy questions, I think. Um, yeah, it might uh, might lower the threshold. So maybe it's, it is good might go easier, faster, to help the patient for just little questions. I think it might be good if there is um, a good um, privacy, because that is a problem that you share the information uh, through the internet uh, where everybody can uh, get into. I mean, if you're uh, good with computers. Um, myself, I just started using, uh, exchanging patient information uh, through CEO. I don't know if you know it. It's just uh, uh, you have a password, a code, to get into your kind of WhatsApp. And, uh, but. I think that that is important. That uh, if the technology can manage it to uh, give uh, that procedure uh, the right privacy, uh, it might might work. What I have been discussing with a colleague is that it's um, possible, possible that we're going to uh, work too much with computers. It's not only the privacy that is a problem, but it's also that um, we have to use checklists and stuff. So you're working and uh, so much on the computer that you hardly have any time to see the patient. 
so that is maybe the bad thing, and it's not only uh, the work of technology. You, we have to protect ourselves because yeah. you get sued or ear easily, and uh, so to protect ourselves, to protect the hospital, we have to uh, we get checklists and checklists, and. I, I'm afraid that we're working with so many checklists that we hardly have time for patients. Both sides to this intricate story were coined, and in regards to the opinions that were voiced, it truly makes you wonder, is technology making the health industry more effective or pushing doctors away from patients?